Hello dear subscribers and watchers, what's up? From Slidenote, this is Waves over here. In this video, let's build the menu driven version of the bank program that we were working so far. We talked about a lot of things, how to make the different classes, how to have the different conditions, how to have the different methods in the previous videos. If you guys haven't seen them, please check the link below in the description text where I have included a link to the other previous videos. So here, we are going to continue our program in NetBeans and we are going to build this as a menu driven program. Now before I talk anything more, let me show you what a menu driven program looks like. Here inside my comment section, I have a small sample of how my output will be like. It says please enter your choice. 1. Add customer, 2. Deposit money, 3. Withdraw, 4. Check balance, 5. Exit, something like that. So if I enter 1, then it says creating an account for the first, first in the bank, then it says enter the balance, I say 1200, it says enter the account number, I say A122, enter the name, I say Vivs over here, and then it says the customer Vivs with the balance 1200, account number A122 has been added to our database. Now again, it goes back to the same place where it says please enter your choice 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 10. So you want to keep doing this infinitely as long as the person does not select 5 which means exit. So now if I enter 2 over here, it's going to say enter the account number, I say A122. If it says how much money to deposit, I say minus 154.6 on purpose and then it says please enter that the amount should be positive or something like that. Then again it goes back to the same place. This time if I enter the proper, if I enter some other account number which is not found because if you remember A122 was the account number, I entered 175 right over here when it has the account number and hence it says the account number was not found. Again it goes back this time. I enter A122, it says how much money you want to put, 546, it says 546 was deposited, the balance now is $1746 in your account and then it goes back to the same place. So when you press 5 over here, it's going to exit. Now this is how a menu driven program is supposed to be made, it, it's supposed to keep running all the time. So at this point, inside my main method, I have some system.out.println statements that say the same things. And enter your choice, add customer, deposit, withdraw, check balance, interest and exit. So this has to keep running infinitely. So how do you run something infinitely? Very simple, you just have a while loop or a do while loop and you put the condition as true which means keep running. And this is gonna of course not change because true means forever, right? So here just put a tab over here, format stuff and at this point let's run this and see what happens. Of course the output is not gonna be pretty because these statements are gonna keep executing so if you press shift F6 right now maximize the window as you guys notice it's constantly and continuously running right let's stop the running over here at the bottom and say stop yes and then let's come back here so at this point there is something I need to tell you guys it is about this class bank and it's about the number of customers here now we have not created any object for any customer over here what we have simply said is that there is a customer array that will contain thousand customers that's all we have said and we actually need a reference to this array inside our public static void main the reason we need that is when you say add customer you want to ensure that you add that customer to some element inside this array right and hence we are going to need this here by saying thousand we simply specified an upper limit on the maximum number of customers that our bank can have so here i'm going to make a method inside this bank class that's going to say public customer get customers something like this now if you don't know how to return arrays again it's not very complicated you can just put a bracket here to indicate that you're returning a customer array from your method and then you can say simply return customer over here so at this point in the return statement remember there are no brackets when you're returning an array it's just like having the variable name as it is and for the return type this bracket along with the name over here over here in the return type of the method so we are gonna create an object of the bank but before that let's try to take input from the user for the particular choice right so for that if you guys remember there's something called system.in the system.in is an area where all the characters entered by your keyboard are going or you can say it's like a pipe from where you can get the characters now unfortunately this is all in bytes so you want to convert this first into characters. For that you use a class called input stream reader. So input stream reader, input stream reader equals to new input stream reader. Again I'll be talking a lot more about this when we talk about IO and Java. So still then you guys will have to rely on this for now because there is a whole lot of stuff to discuss as far as these classes and methods are concerned. Now this is gonna read 
the data one character at a time. What I want is to read the entire line that the user enters in a single shot. For that, I need to use a class called buffered reader. I'm gonna say buffered reader. So as you guys notice, the constructor of buffered reader takes an argument of type reader, of which this input stream reader is a complete subclass. So you can remove this statement here, and you can put the entire new stuff that you had inside the buffered reader constructor. In effect, telling that take the character in the form of bytes, convert that into individual characters group the characters into the individual string into the entire string that you want to read in a single line that's what this complete statement actually does now we'll be talking about this in a lot more detail in the IO video so don't worry about it right now if you don't understand much about it so let's talk about the first option so here we're gonna have to take this value that the user enters for that wise I'm gonna say reader dot read line now this buffered reader dot read line is a statement that is gonna wait for the user to enter something on the on the console or output window and read the complete line and return that as a string now what I want to do is store this as an integer because I'm concerned with the fact that user enters one user enters two we deposit money user enters three we withdraw money and so on and hence I need to convert the string on the right hand side to an integer on the left hand side now that is pretty simple use the class integer it has a special method called parse int that is responsible for taking a string input and returning an integer that you see here in the syntax I'm gonna say parse int and just put this entire thing inside in other words I'm doing many things at the same time I'm first evaluating buffered reader dot read line that is gonna read the entire line return that as a string and next this execute which is integer dot parse int of that string and that is the number that goes inside in choice so at this point if you guys are wondering what this looks like let's try to run this and find out if I say shift f6 right now there you see it says please enter your choice and now since I said reader dot read line it's actually waiting for me to enter a complete line and press enter for example I can say webs was here over here and then I press enter over here and at this point of course there is an exception because we are trying to typecast this web was here statement into an integer choice that we have here so the string is trying to be converted into an integer which is not going to happen because the value is whiffs was here but if you run this again and if you enter something like phi over here then that works perfectly and once again as you guys notice we are presented with the same set of choices and the reader dot read line runs again making us wait here at this point for the user input so let's actually uh, reduce the output and get back to this place and figure out what to do next so now that we have the choice we can use an if else condition or we can use a switch case condition it's completely your call I will use a switch here I'm gonna say switch and I'm gonna say choice now switch is just like an if else you say case one that means the user enters one as the value of choice then do this the user enters two as the value of choice then do this and the reason we put a break statement is you want to ensure that as soon as the user enters one that statement is executed and this complete switch statement stops processing further that's what that's why we put a break over here now let me copy paste this for the six choices that we have so right now let's write the simplest code that we have for exiting this complete system now there are several ways to exit this some people create a boolean at the top and then make it false over here on some people do other things but I'm gonna follow the simplest way in case six where we say exit over here if the user enters six on the output window what I want to say is system dot exit this is the simplest way to exit stuff and if you wonder what the zero is if you put a zero it means the program terminated perfectly and in normal conditions if you put any other value it means there was some kind of error and you were forcefully supposed to terminate the program now since we are perfectly exiting the program without any issues I put zero over here so at this point let's run this and see control s shift f6 and as you guys notice it says add customer now if I say one over here it's gonna keep asking me the same thing again if I put four over here it still runs but if I enter six over here then as you guys notice it says build successful which means the program stopped and the reason for that is when you say six as the choice it goes to the switch over here and then it executes the statement under case six causing system dot exit zero to run and thereby stopping the running of our app so at this point all we need to do is go inside and write code for each case in detail so let's talk about that in the next video if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment box below thanks for watching I'll catch you guys in the next video